Hey everyone, this is Tyler Shaw and you are watching The Hangout. What's up? How are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic. Uh, I'm in Toronto, uh, home studio, because, you know, studios aren't open. So <laughs> that's uh, spruce up the place a little bit. So, yeah. Okay, let's get right into the music. Your first single, When You're Home, was released last week. How has your release weekend been? It's been incredible. Um, you know, this one specifically means a little more to me because it's my favorite song I've ever written. Um, so to have the, uh, the response be so positive uh, and so overwhelming is, is tremendously, um, makes me very, very happy. So yeah, we released it uh, Thursday at midnight um, and it's been, it's been awesome to see everyone sharing it and seeing um, messages come through on social media about it um, and already how it's making an impact in people's lives. Yeah, it's such a romantic, wholesome blend. And like when I first listened to it, it felt like a warm hug. And it was just like, yes. oh, this is so nice. And then yes. I also saw fans getting teary eyed to it. Yeah. How, does it how does it feel to have such an emotional connection with your lyrics and music with fans? It means like the world to me. Um, you know, that's why I write music is for, for people to, to feel, you know, to feel things. Um, and especially when the music means, you know, it's coming from a very raw and honest place, um, to have that feeling reciprocated when people listen to the, to the song. Yeah. I don't think there's any way to describe it fully. It's just, um, it's very touching and very, very humbling. And, uh, this, that's why I, I write music. So. And you said it was your favorite song written. How does it compare to like the other songs that you've written before? I've never felt this way about a song before. That's the biggest difference. Um, you know, I wrote, I wrote When You're Home in, in London before the pandemic in, in March, just before everything started to go crazy. And um, it was originally written on, on piano and I sat down and I had this like waltzy uh, voice note that I pulled out for the other writers. Da, 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 like that stuff, right? So I sat down on the piano, started playing that and everyone just was like, yeah, like, this is cool. Let's vibe with it. I wrote the song in 45 minutes. I wrote the song in 45 minutes because everything just, it just, everything made sense and everything just clicked so well. And it, it was when I re was listening back to it that same day, you know, after laying down a rough vocal and everything over piano, I was, I, I don't know. I've never felt this way before. I was like, just couldn't stop smiling when I listened back, so. That's so awesome. Um, the concept of the song, you said it was inspired by a video game trailer. Is that true? It is true. Yeah. So it was very a rough um, kind of in that six, eight or three, four timing. I was searching through this uh, on a Nintendo Switch game. I don't, I, I don't even know what game it is anymore, but it was just like one of those trailers that you watch. And I was like, oh, this is this is really neat. Like, I love this like whimsical romantic vibe um so that's kind of where my, the light bulb went off and i was like oh that'd be really cool to do a song like this but it wasn't until like a month month and a half later where i was in this session and i was like oh yeah i had this like i want to do this waltzy vibe so nice i love that so you you have part in writing performing producing what would you say is your favorite part of that whole like creation process oh man Making it hard, like I can't just pick one. It, they, they all they all hit a different part in my brain, I think. Um, you know, there's there's nothing like writing a fantastic song, like when you're home and feeling that feeling, there's nothing like it. But then there's also nothing like uh, having a production come together uh, on a song that just like, oh yeah, that, that, that drum fill there, or that synth uh, sound makes so much sense. Um, that's also a different type of feeling. Um, so it, it all it all eventually comes together, but in their own individual right, they they hit a different part of my brain, which uh, excites me. You just love the whole process as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Let's talk about the music video. It first first with the song alone, you get shivers, and then with the music video, you bundle it all together. It's like a belated Christmas present. 
<laughs> what was it like getting to be in front of the camera, but also having it your first co-directed film, like being behind the camera as well? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, I've always loved being, I've always loved being in front of the camera, but at the same time, I've always enjoyed being on the other side of the camera. I think, um, you know, it's something I want to dive into a lot more. Um, even before this officially co-directed video, um, I've been involved behind the camera uh, throughout all my music videos, just because I like seeing the shots. I like, you know, having, putting my input here, because at the end of the day, it's, it's, it is my music video. So uh, I have to be happy with it. So, you know, I put my input in there, but, you know, it wasn't until this year where I was like, you know what, I think I have a good handle on it. So let's, let's do something together. Um, and the young astronauts, like they're, they're such great people to learn from. So uh, I've enjoyed working with them since uh, the Intuition album, actually. We see different era pieces or time pieces. What was the inspiration behind having those different parts? Again, it just it just comes down to the feeling. Um, I remember before I even started writing this third album, I actually created a, a Pinterest board of, of what I wanted the album to sound like. Every time I'd go into a session, I would look at this Pinterest board and remind myself, like, this is, this is the vibe that I'm feeling. Um, and that aesthetic in the music video is very much representative, re representative of what's on my Pinterest board. So that's so cool. Um, so there's a big moment in the video where you kind of have to pause and then rewind and be like, double check that. <laughs> Has that been announced yet? The official date? Have you like I announced mean, that? Or are you getting? I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say it. It's in the. It's in the video. If you want to send out the time signature and do your thing. This is the first, actually, I've only seen other one, one other comment uh, on the music video itself that someone actually caught that. So um, not a lot of people are picking up on the, the Easter egg in the video. So if you have a moment, go really watch the music video and you'll see a little surprise in there. There's a big surprise. Um, let's talk about it. You have an album coming out. Yes. Soon, soon, soon. Yes. We won't drop the date. Go back and watch the music video. Um, <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? Um, how excited are you to finally be releasing this third album? Uh, I'm very excited. Uh, obviously times are different because we're in a pandemic and I can't tour the album, which sucks. But uh, the music itself, I'm just, I'm overjoyed with. I'm so excited to release it. It's, it's my best written stuff, honestly it is. So um, having that feeling behind the project, it just makes it more, way more exciting um and everyone else is excited so a lot of positivity all around um third album that's insane to think about you know so it's been it's been fun to to write the album and to create the album a lot actually has been done i'd say like 80 percent of it has been done right here uh in toronto in my basement studio because studios aren't open and because i can't travel to go to writing sessions we've had to rely on technology like zoom zoom writes um to create the album, which has been an experience in itself. How do you think the events from last year kind of impacted this album and the whole writing process? Like you did mention like the Zoom writing sessions and everything. Yeah, I mean, I mean, beginning at the beginning of the pandemic, it was a it was a hard transition uh, going from like, oh, you're going to LA and then you're going to London to write and then you're going to be on tour and then you're going to do this festival, you're going to do this, you're going to go here and do that. It was very, none of that's happening. You're at home. And my mind, my body knew it was happening, but my mind was still like, oh, you're supposed to be over here. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that. So it was very difficult for me to, to understand, to, to grasp that concept. Um, the silver lining of it all is that I had a couple of things. I had time to myself. I had time to wake up and just like go outside in my backyard and have a cup of tea and read a book or not even read a book, just sit there and reflect on everything and just think about life and myself and my relationships and friendships and, and everything. Um, so that, that was a very, I think that was a very integral part in the creation of this album is like, I got to mentally have a, a massive reset and, and a massive way of relaxing and just being one uh, with myself and understanding um, everything a lot more uh internally um so that was that was a big that was a big thing for me and also i found out in april that uh i was expecting my first my first kid so i was to be through uh to be with my wife for the entire pregnancy has been such a blessing so uh because if 
the pandemic didn't happen, I think I'd be here and there and everywhere. So those are the two silver linings uh, in this whole this whole mess. That's so exciting. How many songs was were inspired by your new child, like when creating this album? I mean, there a lot of them. However, there's like you you can listen to it and you wouldn't even notice. You know what I mean? Because I, I wrote it in a way that's not specific to to being a parent or to you know to being a new parent. Because I want it to be as relatable as possible and. And that's the one thing I really enjoy doing is writing lyrics that can be interpreted to in any situation that you're you're in, um, metaphorically or literally or whatever it is. So that was uh, yeah. I think I think it just gave me a new purpose and a new a new drive and new motivation when it comes to to writing the music. That's so awesome. Um, for our show, which is the Hangout, we always want to share how music kind of impacts people differently. Um, mm -hmm. You also flagship and led artist Can with the Lean on Me yes. project last year. So, how do you think music has impacted or kind of changed your life personally for yourself? Um, I, it's everything. You know, you think about a movie with no music, wouldn't be wouldn't be too great. You know, it'd be it'd be okay, but. Um, through, especially through the artist can thing though, it's like, I wanted to give back, you know, I, I was raised in, in a way where that's important to do. You know, you wanna, it keeps you grounded. It keeps you uh, human in a way. So that was uh, that was an important project to be a part of. Um, and to kind of, I didn't even I, like, thinking back and retrospectively, it's like, now I've had a minute to just like realize what we accomplished. It's incredible. It's actually incredible and you know, hats off to everyone who made that happen in a short amount of time of three weeks. Um, you know, hopefully I get to work with these, these amazing talents in a, in a, in another capacity. Um, but you know, music heals and this is like a double whammy where you can listen to the song to make you feel better. But when you listen to it, hundred percent of the proceeds to the song go to the Canadian Red Cross to help COVID-19 relief. So, um, it's something really special that, that, uh, I'm super proud of. Yeah, it was it was just crazy to see the sort of impact and having all the Canadian artists come together and just share their yeah. music. It was awesome. Bieber, Buble, Sarah McLaughlin, Brian Adams, Avril Lavigne, so many, so many amazing people. Yeah, it's crazy. And lastly, what do you want fans and new listeners to even take away from this upcoming album and all your new works? You know, I'm not going to tell them what to feel or what to think. It's going to be an experience for the individual. Um, you know, cause I could say the album's about love and, uh, but the trouble, the, the difficulties of love, but they could, you know, they could listen to it and, and think about something completely different. Um, the majority of the songs come from real experiences. Uh, so you're, you're going to experience raw emotion and vulnerability and honesty, which is the only way I feel like you should write a song. Um, so just, just expect, um, good song, good music, good songs, good music, um, and experience front to back. That's amazing. We can't wait to hear it. This is going to be a new era and we're so excited. Totally. Thank you so much for chatting. Thanks, That's Sydney. Appreciate it. Tyler Shaw. <laughs> All right.